death. Destruction. Lima na sir, lima. Tirain nyo na sir, 6 to 1. Ramadan, sana maparusanan, sebelah pasal parusan, parusan ni Allah ni. Despair. We're in a Muslim cemetery in Marawi City. The remains of 27 bodies recovered from the battle zone are buried here. Local terror groups attempt to take over the Islamic city of Marawi in southern Philippines during the holy month of Ramadan. What do they want? Establish a caliphate where ISIS or Daesh will rule. It's war. Filipinos against Filipinos. Soldiers, terrorists, battle over territory and flag. President Rodrigo Duterte declares martial law in Mindanao. It's the biggest crisis of his young administration. Armed Forces Chief General Eduardo Año vows to use his new powers to defeat the enemy. We will use the special powers of martial law to uh, defeat this multi group and other armed groups who are uh, who have connived to rebel and trying to dismember this part of the territory from the Philippines. Residents flee. The once bustling Islamic city turns into a ghost town. There's no easy explanation for the tragedy that hits Marawi. The clashes start in a village called Basak Malutlut where the military spots a most wanted terrorist leader and moves in to take him. Bullet holes on freshly painted walls show the intense firefight that erupted in this safe house in Basak, Malutlut. The Marawi crisis started here. This four-story building with a red gate was the target of a military raid on May 23 because here they spotted Abu Sayyaf leader Isnilon Hapilon. The first clashes erupted here. ISIS names Isnilon Hapilon its top leader in Southeast Asia. The veteran terrorist leader based in Basilan is responsible for so many atrocities in Mindanao. He has long been the subject of a manhunt. In Marawi, he joins young radicals who grew up in the city. The Maute brothers led by Omar and Abdullah. They all pledge allegiance to ISIS. Kaya nabigla yung tulupan natin dahil ang, nung mag, uh, gusto nilang huliin si Isnilon Hapilon, o kunti lang naman yung tulupan doon sa bahay na yon Pero nung lapitan nila yung bahay at uh, pasokin yung gate, lumaban sila. Tapos yung mga paligid na, yung mga bahay-bahay sa paligid, naroon din palang mga armado doon. Hapilon escapes arrest yet again. What happens next surprises the generals. Armed Marawi residents rush into the streets wave the ISIS black flag and attack strategic points around the city. They occupy a Maypakpak medical center. They harass Camp Ranao, the military headquarters. They surround the city hall. Hindi natin pwedeng na uh, iwanan ng city hall dahil uh, there were attempts na gusto nila pasukin ito and they will take over the... Uh, they wanted to raise the black yes, flag. They release prisoners at the city jail set ablaze the Protestant-run Dunsalan College and the Catholic St. Mary's Parish. They take hostages along the way, move towards Bangalore, the city's commercial district, where they hold out for months. Barangay Maria Cristina Balos. Uh... Marawi Bishop Edwin de la Peña is away when the terrorists attack the city. But his residence is packed with workers in the middle of preparations for a Catholic fiesta. Uh, they were... Uh, ready captives, no? When the uh, terrorists came in. 
They take his right-hand man, Father Chito Suganob, and church staff. Nakareceive ako ng tawag using the cell phone of my secretary. But uh, to my surprise, uh, yung boses ay boses lalaki at saka matapang at saka he was uh, ordering me this to do this and that. No? Uh, he was giving me his demands no? na dapat iparating ko sa, sa military uh, that uh, they uh, declare a ceasefire. The bishop hears crying in the background. The man gives the phone to Father Chito. Si Father Chito, sabi niya, ah, kami ay na-hostess ngayon dito, Bishop. The Bishop gets in touch with the military and receives instructions to keep communication lines open. I called back. I, I was the one who contacted them that uh, I have already relayed the message. Hindi ko na makontakt. Wala na, wala na. The line was, was cut off, no? The armed men also target Dansalan College a protestant-run school the Maute brothers attended as young boys. Pinalabas yung mga Maranao, sabi na, sasabihin nyo to sa mga officials nyo or military na nakuha namin yung mga teachers nyo or co-teachers nyo. Ngayon, nalabas sila, kami pinapasok sa van. Pagpasok sa van, sabi niya, na siyempre nag na yung mga babae as well as kami din. Oh. Father Chito is also forced into the van and off they went to Bangolo. Ikot-ikot then. May stopover kami in Bangulo. Yun yung natakot kami kasi parang pinaline kami. Sabi nila, lumabas kayo ng van, magline kayo. Akala nga namin doon na yung parang execution na tinatawag. Baka babarili na lang kami doon. For days, the bishop fears Father Chito is dead until the eighth day when he appears in a terrorist propaganda video. Please consider us. We want to live another day. We want to live another month. We want to live few years. This is Baloi Bridge in Marawi City. At the height of the war, it is one of the three critical bridges in the battle area. It has seen a lot of fighting and death. It's still day one of the siege, but it is already close to midnight. First Lieutenant Geraldo Alvarez takes two armored vehicles and 19 men with him to rescue a wounded officer and bring in reinforcement troops. Paglabas ko ma'am dun sa, ano ma'am, sa brigade, uh, ano na ma'am, ma'am. Nakakahinala na lahat ng paligid, ma'am. The bullets come flying as soon as they reach Baloi Bridge. Yun nga lang, ma'am, habang nagmumuba ko dun sa tulay, may hinarang silang sasakyan. So dun sa sasakyan na yun, nagkataon, ma'am, na kayang-kaya namang banggain ng tanki ko, ma'am. So binangga ko siya. Nakapasok, ma'am, yung tanki. Inside enemy territory, he learns that military armor can only do so much against rocket-propelled grenades or RPG. Kailangan kong umatras. Kaya nung nangaatras na ako, ma'am, uh, doon may parang uh, minaso na ma'am yung vehicle ko, ma'am, na, na RPG na pala ako, ma'am. Hindi pa ako nakakalayo, ma'am, ng mga ano, uh, nasira na ma'am yung vehicle, hindi na gumana. So pag hindi nagana ma'am, sinundan naman nila kami, ma'am. So pagkasunod, sabi ko, uh, kailangan nating lumabas ng tanki. Thus begins the biggest battle of their lives. Their training, his leadership, are put to the test. Nawala na yung usok doon sa vehicle, nakita ko na yung situations nila. So doon na, na yung isa nakahandusay mama. Nung paghila ko si late private for last, pag sinasandal ko siya, umiwalay man ma'am yung bewang niya kasi noon. So idinikit ko na lang ma'am. They apply first aid on each other while they repel the attacks. Kahit na yung mga bulag ma'am, so sila ma'am yung uh, pumuputok. Kung baga sinahit ko muna ma'am yung, ano nila, yung baril nila, sabi ko wag na nilang galawin, kakalabitin nila lang, gamitin nyo na lang yung signs up. Uh, sense of hearing us. The rescuers need rescuing, but by then troops can't cross Baloi Bridge anymore. Yung isang tropa ko ma'am na may putol ng paa, sabi niya sir, uh, uhaw na uhaw na ako. Uh, dahil ano, hindi man, uh, pagka ganun na masyado na yung wounded niya, hindi masyadong pinapainom. So parang uh, deep deep lang ng konti, ganun. So umikot na naman ako ng sector, kaso pagbalik ko na naman sa kanya, uh, parang inaayos na lang niya yung sarili niya hanggang sa yun, uh, parang nalagutan na siya ng hiningat. A chopper comes for them, but enemy snipers force the pilots to leave. Alvarez and his men take cover inside houses nearby. They try to restore the vehicle, but to no avail. They are on their own for days. Kami ma'am yung ano doon, bumabagbag. Hanggang sa 
napagod na ma'am yung ano yung gunner ko ma'am kasi nag, yung driver jajaki yung palagi yan tapos yung gunner sila lang yung uh, bumabagbag doon sa mga snipers ma'am They run out of bullets The driver volunteers to get what's left in the other vehicle Nung isasampan niya na doon sa vehicle tinamaan siya sa tagiliran ma'am Nung tinamaan siya sa tagiliran ma'am nakapasok pa siya ma'am sa loob ng vehicle So nakapag-jacking pa, sabi ko, okay lang, okay, hindi ka anong malala yung tama niya ma'am. Kaya lang napansin namin ma'am, yung jacking niya, yung atras sa bante niya, iba na. Hanggang sa niradyohan na ako ma'am na, ano, na nalagutan na siya ng hininga ma'am. So yung nagamit, nadala niyang bala ma'am, yun ma'am yung naka, ano, nakapatay ma'am dun sa mga pilit na lumalapit ma'am dun sa amin ma'am. Enemies burn the houses troops are occupying. Alvarez loses another man to enemy snipers. Bumalik ma'am yung ano yung Air Force. Pinakawalan niya ma'am yung ano yung rocket niya dun sa North ko tapos dun sa may East portion ko. So ano ma'am at least natamemi ma'am yung mga kalaban dun ma'am. After several failed attempts, rescue finally comes on the fifth day. Sumisigaw sila la tropa, tropa hanggang napapaulan din sila ng bala ma'am. Bullets rain on them as they move towards the extraction point where choppers are waiting. Na doon kami nagkita-kita so yun na halos din na nila may makilala kasi panay, parang uling na yung itsura ko nun ma'am. Alvarez brings home 15 of the 19 men he brought with him. A remarkable achievement in the battlefield. He is nominated to receive the highest combat award, the Medal of Valor. Piling ko tinulungan talaga kami ng Diyos kasi parang inilayo kami talaga ma'am sa mga tama ng balas. It will take the military two months to regain control of Baloi Bridge. The bloodiest day of the war happened here, when 13 Marines died on June 9, 2017. Marawi is notorious for loose firearms. It took a while for residents like Abdul Muhaming to realize it isn't the usual rido or clan war anymore. Kaso lang ito, sobra na ito. Noon, mga ridu, uh, ridu lang, yung patay-patay lang sa daan. Ngayon, nagsobra na ngayon. Marami na napugutan ng ulo dyan sa malatlat. He evacuates on day 5 of the clashes. Sobra na. Hindi kami makatulog sa putukan. Nagamitan na ng yung mga bumba na malalakas. Yung hindi namin kaya pakinggan. Eh. But escape is not as easy for others. <laughs> Neighbors turn into heroes in the rush to rescue civilians trapped in the battle zone. <laughs> In areas rescuers cannot reach, residents like Anisa Mukado brave the crossfire. Tumakas kami tatlo na doon sa ikom, doon yung bahay namin. Kaya ang ginawa ko, umakyat ako ng father, di tumalon kami. Kaya tumakbo na tumakbo kami pasiksag, makagrinig kami na motor ng mga... ISIS na yan, magtago kami, di tatakbo naman. Makikita din namin na helicopter, kaya iba ka hindi kami nila makikita, kaya hindi natin alaban, alam kung sinong kalaban mo. She sees a soldier at Bangolo Bridge and screams for help. Sabi ko, tulong, civilian kami. Na yung tina, sinalubong nila ako, na tinulungan nila ako, doon kami nakaligtas. Ang dami-dami ngayon, civilian dyan, hindi nakalabas. Sabi nila, oy kung makalabas ka dyan, sabihin mo marami pa dito ha. Oo, sabi ko, opo, opo. In the middle of all the violence, residents like Norodin Alonto Lukman and his niece make a stand to defy the radicalism the terrorists espouse. Muslims protect their Christian neighbors. I told my Christian friends who are with me that I will die first before they kill you. Mga kasama namin na nagsabi na lang kami ng Allahu Akbar para malam, malaman nila na lahat kami uh, maranaw. Make no mistake about it. The people, the Muslim people in this country are outraged by this action of some people who wants, who wants to drive a wedge between the Muslims and Christians and to destroy our city and destroy the relationship between Muslims and Christians in this country.
Back in the safe house in Basak, Malutlut, the military recovers a video showing Hapilon and the Maute brothers planning the attack along with Malaysia's most wanted militant, Mahmud Ahmad. It confirms the foreign fighters are in Marawi. The video is part of propaganda footage the terrorists shot. Uh, well, the grand plan of uh, this military ISIS group is actually in time of the first day of Ramadan, they will uh, seize the whole of Marawi and uh, proclaim an Islamic caliphate or state, just like uh, what happened in Mosul when uh, al-Baghdadi occupied Mosul, June 2014. General Anu says the raid in Basak, Malutlut, foiled a bigger terror attack. They are not able to fully deploy all their forces, actually even additional forces from AKP and BIFF. Supposedly, they are not able to but because of what happened when we raided the safe house on May 23, where we got also the copy of the videos uh, in that safe house, now about lahat, naging premature na lahat. But it also shows how much the military underestimated the enemy, despite intelligence reports weeks before the attack. The military operations are led by men who hunted down Hapilon for years. Lieutenant General Charlie Galvez is chief of the military command responsible for almost all of the areas in southern Philippines where terrorism is a threat. Politician Mujib Hataman worked with Galvez when he was a young officer in Basilan. Thank you very much. Si General Galvez po, ang Western Mindanao commander, nag-brigade commander din ho niya sa isla ng Basilan. Kaya tila ata mainit sa kanya si Isnilon Hapilon. The ground commander in Marawi is his classmate in military school. Major General Rolly Bautista also came from Basilan. This is how the war is fought here in Marawi City. It is urban warfare. The main battle area is about 200 meters away. The Marines here, who are used to fighting in the jungles, occupy tall buildings. And snipers here bore a hole on the wall so they could have a view of the main battle area. Gentlemen, kung nakikita nyo ang hirap na sundalo, pag-clear nyo lang ano, ng pababa, sa baba, Buhos, minamaso niya yan, yung uh, kabilang dinding. Dahil pagka, pagka kumaliwa ka ng kanan, nado na sniper. So ang ginagawa natin, binubutas natin yung dinding. Ganun na ano, ganun na ano, ganun lang kahirap. Yung dalawang ano, dalawang building, dalawang araw din namin binubutas. Ang dami namin namamatay sa pagbutas lang isang building. We're looking at the 105mm cannon of the Philippine Army. We are 200 to 300 meters away from the position of the enemies. It's the final push to end the war in Marawi. And from here, we can already see the tallest building in the battle area, the CND center point, where one of the officers of the army was killed. The Philippine military fought urban warfare in Zamboanga City in 2013. But Marawi is so much worse. Army. Air Force. Navy. Combined forces in the biggest, longest, and bloodiest operation of the Philippine military since World War II. Allies come to help. U.S., Australia, fly surveillance planes to help locate the enemy. China sends rifles. The mission is complex. Neutralize the terrorists while making sure the hostages are safe. 
the military resorts to airstrikes. Horrifying residents like Normira Pangarungan who fear bombs will destroy their homes or kill loved ones still trapped in the battle zone. Sing mag bomba bomba sila. Mas lalo ngayon. Paano sila? Kung may natira pang isang dal dalawa, tatlo, patay na. Yun ang problema ko man. Kahit nandito ako na para nandoon ako, gusto ko pa pumasok doon. Alang-alang sa pito. Kahit hindi pwede na kasi makuman yung mga kapatid ko. Yun ang panganay. Eh. Weeks later, she is reunited with her family. But her nightmare is all too real to the military. At least twice, bombs accidentally hit troops. The Marawi War forces young officers to grow old beyond their years. Billy Kojam left military school only three years ago. In June, his company was pulled out of Basilan to join the fighting here. I was new, ma'am, because I didn't have much experience in urban warfare. What is the most difficult in urban warfare? In urban warfare, it's sniping, ma'am. Then, the... Uh, labasan nila yung bahay ma'am, maggumawa ng butas, abangan yung butas nila ma'am, tapos pag pumasok yung tropa, doon na nila puputukan ma'am. He won't forget his first battle in Marawi. The mission, clear this green building that serve as an enemy stronghold, as shown in videos recovered from the enemy. Nung unang attempt kasi namin ma'am is, meron pala dyan ma'am sa likod, Nakapwesto yung kalaban. Hinintay lang kami dumikit, ma'am. Then, uh, firefight talaga, ma'am. Yung nangyari. Hindi lang sniping, ma'am. Tapos, explosions din sa mga from uh, in 2 or 3 ng kalaban yung ibang naka-wounded sa uh, tropa namin. Ma Colonel Mon Almodovar is Kodjam's battalion commander. Nung mga first uh, days kasi, few days, very strong pa yung defensive pa ng kalaban. And we, ang na-assign sa amin is clear yung dalawang building na matataas dyan sa harap, yung pagpasok mo dito, yung nasunog na building na kulay green yung roof. Dito ma'am, naipit kami dito ma'am, sa first floor. Pagpasok namin sa first floor ma'am is may kalaban na pala sa second floor at saka third floor ma'am. Pinapasok lang kami sa first floor. Hindi na kami maka-strigate. Ang last option ng mga nilabat ko at saka yung company commander ko ma'am is... Uh, putukan yung second floor at saka third floor habang nag-extricate kami ma'am. Pinasok yung dalawang tangke, dumikit kami dun sa tangke ma'am. Then dahan-dahan kami umatras ma'am. It will take them four attempts in a span of three days to take the building. Yung tropa namin, kabalik-balik lang, sige, wounded, balik ulit. One soldier is killed. Troops push on and learn new tactics along the way, but so do the enemy. The mosques make good hiding places. We are limited to ano to strike yung mga mosque or kanyunin natin, bombahin natin yung mga mosque. So because of ay nga yung ating uh, cultural sensitivities and respect for religion, safe na safe pa rin sila dyan sa ilalim ng mosque, sa basements niya. They also bore holes and dig tunnels. The military can pound buildings with airstrikes, but enemies can move from one building to another using these. So, nung una, hindi sila naghuhukay. Eventually, habang tumatagal, naghuhukay na sila, nagtatunnel na sila. So, kumbaga, nag-improve din yung kanilang mga tactics at saka mga techniques. So, kaya tayo, we have to adapt din sa kanila doon based on kung ano yung tactics ng kalaban. Oh, may tao sa likod ng 6 to 1, kamo. Dalawa, tatlo. Bilisan mo, singit ka muna. Tatlo. Apat. Apat na, sir. Lima. Lima na, sir. Lima. Lima na, sir. Lima. Tirahin nyo na, sir. Six to one. A new problem emerges as troops close in. Improvised Explosive Devices, or IEDs. 
tubok yung suspected nating IED hindi natin malaman kung anong klaseng ordnance item siya pero most probably remote control siya uh, by cellphone by cellphone yung mode of detonation niya is by cellphone the battle area becomes even more complex troops need to move fast to evade enemy snipers but not too fast or they will trip on these bombs the death toll rises Death is always there sa pagsundalo ka, nandyan lang talaga yung isang pamo, lalo na pag nasa gera ka, it's always kumbaga, nakabaw na yung isang pamo sa hukay. So expected na namin yan. So however, we as leaders, we, we, we tried so hard para protektahan yung aming sundalo. Almodovar's 3rd Scout Ranger Battalion later plays a big role in ending the war. Galing kami sa Buteg, yung sa Kuan. Oo, matagal na yung mga uh, ilang buwan na yung ngayon. Lumikas na yung mga ISIS. Dito sila nag-transfer. Eh, sabi ko, bakit ganito na kahit saan tayong pumunta na may ano? The war against ISIS-linked groups in the Philippines did not start in Marawi. It's in Butig, where the Maute brothers operated for years. It just so happened that the mother is from Butig. No, uh, napag-isipan nila itong ano, plano nila, dito sila pumunta sa Butig. Nangyari lang siguro, I guess, na dahil malawak yung uh, bundok namin, at saka medyo may kalooban nito, dito sila nagtatago kasi ma medyo malayong abuti na military. Butik is no ordinary town. It's host to one of the biggest camps of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, the country's dominant Muslim rebel group. This is how the peace process is connected to the war in Marawi. The father of the Maute brothers was once a member of MILF. He and his sons rejected the political solution the group espouses, the creation of a new Bangsamoro region that will give Muslims wider powers over their land. The Maute's prefer the radical ideology of ISIS and decide to carve their own territory. MILF Peace Panel Chairman Mohagher Iqbal says they work to counter the spread of ISIS ideology. Only the factor of the MILF is preventing the Maute group to recruit so many people to their side. But delays in the peace process erodes the MILF's influence, especially among the young. The leadership of the MILF uh, belongs to the first generation of leaders and they are, are, they are advocating for the political resolution of the conflict in Mindanao, which government has not yet complied fully, especially the passage of the BBL. So in terms of uh, uh, moral ascendancy, I think uh, the Modi group is taking something from the moral ascendancy of the MILF. It's become a battle for legitimacy. In 2016, the town that enjoyed relative peace since the MILF embraced the peace process becomes a battle zone once again. We're here at the Municipal Hall of Batig Town in Lanao del Sur. Last week, the Maute group occupied this abandoned municipal building and for the first time raised the black flag of the ISIS. Hapilon joins the Maute brothers in Butig. They receive funding from ISIS. Foreign fighters also come to help. Clashes moved to Piagapo in April, and then Marawi in May. The wedding of Norin Bashir and Jomar Saumay lifts the spirits of the evacuees at the tent city in the town of Pantar. Sana mayus na mayus na Marawi para makabalik na kami doon. Wala na yung gera. Life goes on despite the difficult situation in evacuation centers. But it's a long wait for the war to end. Inside the battle area, hostages learn to live with their captors. Lord Vin Acopio is tasked to tend to wounded Maute fighters. Dr. Omar. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs to cope. Nakadanasan ko nga na halos three days na hindi nakatulog kasi may mga patients na dagsaan. Siyempre, mo monitor mo yung gamot. 
monitor mo yung kailangan niya kasi kakailik mo sabi niya, ihi ako, mga ganyan or matutulog ka na sana sabi niya, kakain ako, mga ganyan so alas 3 days yung parang lasing ka or nakadrugs ka na hindi mo alam Bombs are dropping everywhere Tanggapin mo na lang nasa doon ka sa situation na yun kasi wala din magagawa kung binubumba kayo dyan, tatakbo ka sa labas ano nun, di ba? Baka barilin ka din nila. Kasi akala nila tatakbo ka. Hindi yung intention mo sana umiwas ka ng bumba. Baka sa isip nila, tatakas ka. One day, Omar Maute finds him crying. Sabi niya, um, Omar, gawin mo na lang tong trabaho na to. Yung parang humanitarian na, ano ba, dahil kapwa mo sila tao. O mong gawin to dahil captors or terrorist. He meets Hapilon himself. Sabay kami nagdasal eh, nakakatakot yun siyempre yung alam mo, yung mood nila doon parang ganun, parang mga seryoso, mga ganun, oo. Pero hindi ko pa doon siya na-recognize na si IH yun. Kasi lately ko lang niya na-recognize nung nakita ko na yung mga news. They learn to pray like Muslims, but all the while they plan their escape. Pero before that, may mga plans na talaga kami ni Father. Inihintay lang namin na medyo malapit lang yung operatives. Kasi mahirap naman na tumakbo ka dyan or tumakas ka na, andun pa pala sa milya-milya yung layo ng mga sundalo. We're only about 400 meters away from Batu Mox, where troops had an intense firefight with the enemies. They overwhelmed them and were able to rescue Father Chito Sugano. After 117 days in captivity, they are free. Pray for me for trauma healing recovery. Thank you very much. God bless you. Troops push forward day by day. The last of the enemy strongholds fall one by one. Isnilon Hapilon and the Mautes put up a damned good fight. But on October 16, 2017, they meet their end in Marawi in an assault that Colonel Almodovar leads. A bullet to Hapilon's chest, another bullet to Omar Mautes' head, put an end to their reign okay, okay. of terror. I am confirming that the taunted emir of ISIS in the Philippines and Abu Sayyaf leader is Nilo Napilon and the last of the dreaded Malte brothers, Omar, Omar Kayam, are both dead. This is what's heartbreaking going inside the battle area. We see how houses are destroyed and we're seeing human skeletons among the debris still to be retrieved from the battle area. The crisis is not over. Beyond rebuilding homes and burying bodies claimed by the longest war since World War II is an urgent cry to address the root cause of conflict. There are boiling issues to resolve to prevent Marawi from happening again here or elsewhere. Carmela Fonbuena, Rappler.